Night skies are one of the most daunting things to tackle when you're a beginner. They have so many elements that seem really scary when you're first starting out. Those deep, dense, dark colours and throw in a few stars and it can feel a little bit overwhelming, but I'm here to help. I'm Chloe and I am the designer, creator and co-founder of Blueberry Co Memory Books. I love to draw and I love to colour in and that is what our channel is all about. I live in New Zealand with my family, my two girls, and my husband, who is also the co-founder of Blueberry Co. And we just love to adventure. We're all about making memories with our family. So come and join us, see some snippets of the countryside, help us make some memories, and we're gonna create really amazing keepsake books and coloring in pages all together. I can't wait to have you with us on this journey. Don't forget, if you like our videos, please like and subscribe. It does help us a lot. And back to the show. To test out this new technique, I've gone onto the Coloring Club and I have downloaded this really cute turtle crystal night sky coloring in sheet. And I've printed it out on 170 GSM paper. So it's nice and thick and I can just lay on my pencils. First things first, let's get some inspiration for the colors and the effects that we're going for with this coloring in sheet. I'm using two references. The first one is Sarah Renee Clark's amazing color cube. I have the two set of these and they're a really great reference. They have color cards that give you instructions and colors and inspiration. You can go through and choose the ones that spark your fancy. These are so cool. I just like looking at the colors. They're so amazing. This is an amazing product with photos and color references with all your color codes that you can match to your pens and your pencils. I love mine and I use them for all sorts of things. Sometimes for coloring in sheets, sometimes for, I don't know, my Instagram aesthetic, um, all sorts of things. Sometimes I just get them out and I just flick through them just because, I mean, look at that. Just because I can. So many. I always like to match up my colours. So it looks nice on the shelf. I actually have an affiliate link for this one. So I'll pop the link in the description if you want to check it out and grab one for yourself. I have this idea in my head that I'm going to look for blues and purples and some contrasting colours for the crystals. I've gone ahead and chosen the colour card that's going to be my inspiration for this colouring in sheet. The other thing I use all the time is Pinterest. And for this one, I'm looking for an image for the turtle. So I know where to put my lights and my shadows and how the fins and the skin and the shell all work together in terms of light and dark. I also want a reference image for the swirls of mist and the stars in the night sky. So I found one that I like and I'm just gonna combine them all and see how it ends up. I've decided to challenge myself and use pencils for this one. They're not usually my preferred medium. I like using our water-based brush markers. The Tombow ones are my favorite that I've used in other videos. And it's just one of those things. I think I, I've said it all the time, I am a very lazy colorer. I like getting lots of color down. So using pencils to layer color and build up depth has been a real challenge. So I'm out of my comfort zone here. I'm I'm using the Jazz Art Studio Color Pencils and they are amazing, but I'm starting to think I might need a softer pencil. So if you have a recommendation, please put it in the comments. Um, I love the color on these pencils, but it does take a little while to get the depth and density of color that I'm looking for in this one. I've got my pencils and I think the best way to start is to just grab a scrap bit of paper and start testing out which colors go where, um, how deep to go with the color layering, and just see how it turns out before I start on the actual coloring sheet. I always do this and I think it's one of those pro tips that um, it's really easy to rush through. So definitely grab your spare bit of paper and test before you color. I want the misty swirls to glow. So I'm gonna start on those and I'm gonna blend the lighter colors of the mist into the darker background. I'm mixing blue, pink and turquoise to get a pastel swirl rainbow effect. And I'm testing out a funny technique, which I don't know whether it's gonna work or not, but I'm just gonna color outside the lines a little bit and blend that into the nighttime background. So hopefully that works out. The aim here is to create a glowing effect. I'm really not sure how all of this is gonna turn out, but as I start adding color to the background and deepening the color there, I realized that I kind of need to add the same technique to the start. So I'm coloring outside the lines a bit here and blending in with the background colors. Ugh. This dark background is proving to be tricky and it's actually taken me more than three sittings to finish it between work and kids and school pickup and all of that. So I'm just kind of taking it one step at a time, maybe doing 20 minute blocks. In my previous life as a landscape architect, I was taught professionally to color in one direction and that helps the eye kind of skim over the coloring. But I've noticed that a lot of other colorists 
color in circles and they kind of do smaller circles and just build up color that way. So my coloring in one direction is a really hard habit to break and it looks really great on a landscape plan, but it's not working out so well for these coloring in sheets. So I'm trying to change my technique a little bit and see which one works out best. I've had to go over the color quite a bit to try and get the depth of color that I want. And so I think this is really a fault of the pencils, not that they don't give great color, but just that they're not layering color as deeply and as easily as I want. I'm finally onto the fun bit, the turtle and the crystals. This is the focal point of the whole coloring in sheet. And the reason that I've decided to do a dark background is to help the turtle and the crystals pop. So I'm hoping that once I color it in, I won't see the imperfections in the darker background. I'm referencing back to my inspiration image for the turtle here quite a bit. It's just seeing how the shell works, how the shadows and the highlights work and how all the colors mix together to make it a realistic representation. Some of the fins have quite a lot of white space and others don't. So I'm using pencils and shading to color inside each one of these little shapes. And then I'll add those light and dark bits later using a different medium. I'm also using pink as a highlight color here and that's gonna tie the whole image together. Coloring the turtle is actually way faster than I thought it would be and it looks so amazing. I'm so happy with it. I'm up to the crystals and I'm referencing my color card for this. I have a habit of choosing the same three colors that I'm really comfortable with. So this is forcing me to branch out and add some orange tones, which I don't usually choose into this big blue mass of a picture that I've got going. This 170 GSM paper is holding up really well. It could do with a little bit more grip or texture just to get the best out of the pencils. But I also think if I had some softer pencils, this wouldn't be a problem. Adding some orange and coral tones to this sheet has really helped the blue in the picture pop. So I'm so glad that I've challenge myself to kind of branch out of my favorite colors. I'm ready to add the finishing touches. I've got my white fine tip paint pen. And when I look back at the reference image, I can see that a lot of the cracks and crevices on some of the fins are white instead of black. So I'm using this to go over it and it's just making the whole thing come to life. That makes a huge difference in how realistic and ethereal the whole picture is, which is exactly what I'm going for. The final touch is going around the outside of the turtle and the crystals to give the effect of being backlit. And it's done. This coloring in sheet has taken me five days, four sittings, juggling work and mum life and all the other stuff that we have going on in our lives. Um, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. My kids are super impressed. And as usual, they've asked me to print out one of these coloring in sheets for them and they're gonna give it a go too. This has been one of my favorite coloring in sheets to draw. And so I'm so happy that I finally get a chance to have a go at it and put in the time and effort to bring it to life the way that I had envisioned when I first drew it. This coloring in sheet is from our Blueberry Co Coloring Club. It's a creative membership for people who love to color. If you'd like to join our coloring club, just click on the link in the description. Annual members get access to over 100 coloring in sheets right away. And all you need to do is download, print and color. Thanks for joining me. If you learned anything or you just like watching this video, please pop a comment in the description, like the video and subscribe to our channel. Every like helps and we love sharing our coloring in knowledge with you.